Welcome back. It is 1482. In the last one, the boys started getting introduced to some of the ladies and started courting. Lavinia also started courting with Adam. Uh, Dante and uh, Bidon had their baby that did not survive. And uh, Madalena is going to uh, get engaged to Malcolm. So that's everything that's going on right now. Um, so we have two birthdays. Wouldn't it be awkward if Malcolm just died? <laughs> uh, we have two birthdays. So let's start with Peregrine Landgrab, who can't get a seven. Oops. Okay, well, neither of those was a seven, so it doesn't really matter. And will she have babies? She will. She'll have eight babies. So let's go here. Oh, gosh. Um... Peregrine, are you typing? Hello? My keyboard not working? What's happening? No, it is working. Peregrine, land, grab, eight. Okay, and then we have Malcolm Payne, who can't get a 2, 6, 11, 13, or 14. Oh my gosh, you can do it. Ooh, that was a close one. Honestly, it didn't even occur to me that he could die. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have him marry Madalena this year. She is a fairy, and he knows that, and he's okay with that. Um, ooh, looks like next year there is a war. Um, but anyway, so that's that on that. Let's introduce ourselves to uh, a new family. This family is by Sunny Hates You. <laughs> That's a good name. Um, this is the Ward family. So Herbert is the first son of the illustrious Ward family of knights. His father, Robert, was a three-time war hero, and he needs to live up to that potential as well. He runs the knights' barracks along with his uncle, Eustace. So I think this is Eustace, and this is Herbert. And um, while also caring for his wife and two sons. I can't see the other baby, but here's the baby. <laughs> um, so, yes, he named his son after after his um, father, which is sweet. Yeah, this is Herbert. This is Eustace. This is wife, Veronica. So I am really excited to introduce this new family, especially considering we just had Mortimer decide to join the Knights. So it'll be fun to have him inter interact with some other Knights. So that'll be good. Let's hop into the game. Alrighty, so here we are in our household. We have um, Thomas, and he is just waiting for Lavinia to age up for his aspiration. But he is excited that his children are in, you know, the marriage market and are starting to get involved in that and all of that stuff. And um, Madalena, of course, is uh, going to get a proposal soon. And then the three kids are just making their way. So I'm excited about that. I'm sending Mortimer to practice his swordsmanship some more. He is doing really well with that. He is a prodigy, of course. So he's going to get to level five pretty quickly. I'm working on Thomas getting to level four in four skills or whatever that was. So um, there's that. And then I'm going to have Madalena come over here and talk to Thomas the fourth. In my notes, I write like T4. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. I don't know if you think that's funny, but I do. So anyway, T4, she's talking to him, and um, she is just having a conversation with him about Malcolm, and Thomas is like, look, I know that you and Malcolm really like each other, and I know that you're headed towards marriage, but I'm still in charge of you, and so he still needs to, you know, get my permission, and I need to feel good about him and all of that stuff. So uh, despite the fact that, you know, Madalena is an adult and her father is nowhere to be found off in Forgotten Hollow, um, still Thomas, her her brother, um, you know, even though that's not really her brother, but her brother uh, is, is there for her. So um, there's that. And then uh, Lavinia read her last book to complete the truly accomplished aspiration. So that's really exciting. We're inviting everyone over. So there is that we are also inviting over Malcolm because um, we want him to become friends with Thomas and therefore get permission from Thomas to marry Madalena. So there is 
that. We do, you know, I feel like it's only right that we make sure that any men become friends with like the father or man of the house before they propose to a woman. So I think that that is definitely something that we need to also consider because, you know, obviously women weren't really able to make those decisions on their own during this time period, which is, you know, neither here nor there. But we are having these two chat with each other and hang out just getting to know each other. I'm also trying to invite over some of our new family because I'm thinking that Mortimer, of course, would want to uh, talk with the Knights. You know, he would he would be getting to know the Knights because he would be training with them. And, you know, Eric would have sent him to the, the you know, barracks or whatever it is to uh, or the stronghold and be able to meet the other knights and get to know them and all that stuff. So I want him to be friendly with them. And then also Amelia has come over. So Amelia and, and Thomas V have been getting along. And so now that Thomas and Malcolm are friends, Malcolm is going to be proposing to Madalena. So they have that. We'll have them get married before the end of the year. But yes, Amelia is here and oh, she is kind of mean. We already knew that Amelia was mean. But, um, you know how it goes. So we're just having Thomas kind of talk with her, flirt with her. And then Isabel came over. So Isabel is the other good compatibility a lady that Thomas had. And so I think that, you know, maybe Amelia, her mean side is coming out a little bit. And Thomas is like, maybe I shouldn't. So he's going to get to know Isabel a little more. See if maybe she's the one for him. So he is getting to know the both of them and just chatting and all of that. Just mostly chatting with Isabel because they don't really know each other that well. Um, he just got really high up with Amelia really quickly. Um, but it is so sad. Thomas, okay, he has really good compatibility with both these ladies. But when we look at his attractiveness preferences, he thinks that Isabel is unattractive. And he thinks Amelia is basic looking, which I guess is a step up from unattractive. But um, it's kind of awkward. <laughs> but I think that he honestly wouldn't be, you know, following his heart in a way. He definitely wants to have a reputable young lady be his wife. And he is, you know, hoping for a boost that way just to kind of, you know, he wants a relationship like that's good and that works well and that you know, allows him to not have any problems in society. And I think that that's part of the reason why he prefers Amelia is because of Isabel's unstable family situation. But um, anyway, it looks like Eustace is over here. So we're going to have him chat with uh, Mortimer chat with Eustace because um, Mortimer does want to become friendly with the other knights. So Eustace is right here along with Liberty for some reason. <laughs> um, but he, oh, he's tense. And there goes Eric. So, um, Yes. So we're just having him chat with Eustace. They're actually not getting their relationship up very quickly at all. But, um, you know, Eustace is from a family of knights. So maybe he kind of is irritated by the fact that Mortimer has just come in and gotten the Duke's approval to become, you know, a squire and is just kind of able to just walk in on the nepotism like he doesn't really know Mortimer yet Mortimer hasn't had a chance to prove his skills to Eustace so maybe Eustace will change his mind about Mortimer once he sees that Mortimer isn't just you know doing this for this I mean he is doing it for the status but he's also working really hard to make that happen like he's not doing any half measures so there is that and then uh, Diana just asked Mortimer out on a date so we're gonna go we are going to head out and go and see Diana. Um, she has invited us out to Henford on Bagley to the tavern, so that's interesting. I don't know if this is somewhere that a proper lady like herself would come, but um, let's just have the two of them chat. And look, she proposed to him. So he's going to say yes. I mean, obviously, she wouldn't have proposed to him, but maybe they're just talking and they're like, we should get married. We should totally get married. And so they're really excited about that. They really like each other and they've liked each other. They have good compatibility. He has a crush on her, like all this stuff. And so, um, because of that, I think that she is, you know, they're both really excited about it. They have plenty of time before they would actually get married. But like even, you know, they've probably noticed the turbulent situation because there are a bunch of wars coming up. And so obviously, you know, 
political unrest and upheaval is around. And because of that, um, you know, he knows that he's going to be doing some war stuff. And so he, you know, maybe he does want to kind of hurry into a relationship because he's worried that he'll, you know, have a problem off at war or something. And so basically they're talking and they're talking about marriage and they're both really excited about it. And then he kind of says like, but you know, I have to get your father's approval. We have to talk to your father. And she kind of didn't like that. I mean, their date went poorly because I didn't have them flirt at all, but I'm saying that that's because, you know, she was kind of just like, yeah, let's do it. And he's like, yeah, but, and she's like, oh, I see. Like, you know, so I think while she understands, she was a little hurt that that's like the first thing he thought of when they decided to get married to each other. So um, we are going to start talking to Pedro. This family is a very nice family full of beautiful children and um, a very happy marriage. We have not broken him and his wife up. Um, and I just feel like they're not the type to fall for Dante stuff. So um, there's that. Like, look, there's her brother. Yeah, they're all just like super excited and um, so Mortimer is going to come talk to Pedro and Pedro is going to be like, okay, but what can you offer my daughter? And Mortimer's like, you know, I have an estate. It makes a lot of money. I mean, it doesn't make as much money as Thomas's estate, but it makes like a, a good amount of money, like plenty for Sims to survive off of and be rich off of. It's like at least 2000 simoleons a day. So, um, he's talking about how he has a source of income and then he said, he starts talking about how he is, you know, wanting to become a knight, how he is going to prove himself. And so Pedro's kind of like, okay, well, I know that we are going to have some kind of battle or something coming up. If you prove yourself in the battle and, you know, get some accolades or something, then I will allow you to marry my daughter and all of that. So that's basically the deal that they're making is that, you know, there are some battles coming up and Mortimer is ready to just embrace his future plans because he was already planning on improving his status through wartime. And so he's like, absolutely, I will become amazing and your daughter will never want for anything and all of that stuff. So he's really excited about that. Him and Pedro have this understanding because we know we're going to war next year. So obviously, um, as is rule in my save, if you are a knight, you go to war. So that is something that Mortimer is um, definitely going to war next year. So that's the conversation they had. And um, we are going to just check in on the family. It's the middle of the night right now, so not much is going on, but we do have one more skill we have to get Thomas up in. So I figured that maybe Thomas is hoping to uh, get a little closer to his father. I think that he is a little jealous of Mortimer. And so, um, because he's just kind of sitting back and so he is, um, I think he's feeling a little nervous about it. So he is going to spend some more time with his father and they're going to do some archery together. Maybe he's hoping that he can get closer to his father by, you know, taking part in his hobbies. So that's what they're doing. Oh, but he is not, not having a great time, <laughs> but that's okay. So it is now kind of the morning. Let's um, start inviting people over and stuff. So we are going to first see Amelia. So Thomas and Amelia are going to chat again. Um, honestly, his relationship with Isabel didn't go up very quickly. And I just really think that he would choose the safe option. And he has a crush on her now. So he has a crush on her. So they are just going to flirt with each other a little bit. Nothing too exciting. They're moving much slower than some of the other relationships in um, in this save. <laughs> I know I'm like, oh, it's fine. Our teenagers have plenty of time. And then I get them like engaged in two years. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we do have war and stuff in, in those two years. So who knows if the boys will even be around. So, oh, she just had a not a good response to that. OK, well, we'll stop here. Um Amelia is a little mean. Oh, and then the uh, society papers are reporting Dante's latest conquest. And then also um, that 
Mortimer and that Madalena are engaged. So um, it's not that Mortimer is engaged per se. It's that he has a an arrangement with Pedro with a condition on it. And he has been nothing but polite to Diana. They have not kissed. They haven't done anything. And so they are they are doing very well. So there's that. And I'm just going to check in here. They're doing some... Why are you wearing a ring on your finger? I didn't even notice that. <laughs> but anyway, so we also have to consider... Um, Mortimer and Eustace. So I'm inviting Eustace over again. I think Mortimer probably got the idea that Eustace wasn't totally sold on him. So he's like, hey, why don't you come over for some training? So Eustace is going to come over and we are going to spar with him. We're going to sword fight with him just a little bit. So there is that. And then, oh, they both fumbled it. <laughs> um, okay, so let's try again. And I'll get some cool pictures of them sword fighting. I love that. It's so much fun. So there we go. Mortimer did win. Of course, I think whoever requests it always wins. But anyway, so again, we're doing the archery thing. They seem to be getting along a little better. I think now that Eustace knows that Eustace probably went easy on Mortimer, like he's like, oh, he's probably not very good, and so I'm just gonna, you know, go easy on him, and then he kind of got his uh, butt handed to him there, so anyway, Mortimer is going to just enjoy the friendship, and now that they are kind of, you know, the ice has been broken, and all of that stuff, so I do want them to be friends, just because, you know, they're both knights, and all that stuff, so... Um, we are going to just keep doing the archery thing. Again, I'm trying to get four skills up to level four. Oh, Malcolm. Hey, we'll, we'll see you soon, Malcolm. Don't worry about it. So we're doing that. We're inviting over Amelia again, just to, I'd like them to become boyfriend and girlfriend, at least like just be courting with each other, even though, um, you know, they are moving a little bit slower and all of that. So it's okay. And so... We are going to just have them flirt. It looks like we can't get very high in the relationship very, um, very quickly. So we are just going to do a little bit at a time with Amelia and see how it goes. I think Thomas is unsure of whether Amelia would be a good wife or not because of her mean streak. I think that he might be a little concerned that she wouldn't be proper, but we'll have to see how that goes. So we are going to just, yep, okay, they're, they're not getting along again already. So we'll, we'll stop there. So she's going to head home. And then we're going to have Mortimer and Lavinia come talk. So um, Mortimer and Lavinia are both pretty close to deciding to marry and all that stuff. And I think that Mortimer knows that Thomas is a little standoffish about Mortimer's successes. So he's going to talk to Lavinia instead about it. Like, yes, the twins are BFFs, but I think Mortimer recognizes like that if he started talking to Thomas about like how great his life is, that it might cause some more tension and he doesn't want that. So he's just going to avoid talking about that stuff with Thomas. So he's going to talk with Lavinia and be like, you know, you understand, blah, blah, blah. And so Lavinia definitely like gets what he's going with. And she is like talking about how much she really loves Adam. And that even though she thought she was supposed to be with Iggy, that it turns out that that wasn't true. So she is really excited to try and, um, you know, see where it goes with Adam. So she's going to do that. And um, they're just chatting. So they're just having a good time as siblings bonding, all that stuff. And so I figured we should invite over Adam, who is apparently sleeping at 8 a.m. in the morning. No, you're going to come over here. So <laughs> we're going to invite Adam over. Here he comes. It just takes Sims forever to get to our lot. Okay, so Adam is here, and we are going to just have her and him chatting and being a little flirty with each other. Their relationship isn't even like the highest it can be, but um, it looks like he's going to ask her to marry him. So Adam has just proposed to Lavinia and she has accepted. So she's really excited. And then um, 
he is evil. So he did let a little bit of his evilness out. And I think that that's kind of a red flag, Lavinia. That's a red flag for you that he is evil. Um, but she doesn't really see it. She's just, she loves him. She's a crush on him. She is willing to overlook that. Like maybe he like is mean, but then is like, oh, it was a joke. Like relax, you know, all that kind of like toxic behavior. I don't know, but we'll see if he can overcome his evilness for his love for her. And we'll see where that relationship goes. I'm not convinced that they're going to have a happily ever after, but I think we will get them married. <laughs> so we'll do that and um, just continue on. They are engaged. They're feeling good. Everyone's feeling good and um, they're really happy. So everyone's feeling happy and good. So we are going to actually head out now and um, we're going to do Madalena's wedding next. So we're going to head over to that and we'll just change this, get Madalena in there. I'm going to send them with a bunch of money just because it is kind of annoying to have over a million simoleons in our household. Like that's unnecessary. Um, and then of course I'm I don't know what's wrong with me. Like I put her in red, like red is not the color. It's pink. I just have been dressing so many Sims in red lately. Cause that's like the towny color now. And I totally forgot <laughs> anyway. So we're going to head over to the pain household. Malcolm has aged up into a young adult. And would you believe that he rolled the hates children trait? So that is awkward. So he does not like children, but that's okay. Actually, I wanted to check. Let me check really quick. Madalena. Malcolm. Yeah, so Malcolm Malcolm is the only pain son. Is that correct? No, wait. Yeah, cuz Frost died before he got married. Okay, so yeah, this is and they both have one baby try. But you know, the pain family has been in a worse situation before with one kid and who knows? Like Although we do have the sweating sickness coming up, which I didn't realize and I am now very nervous for because it's like a 50% chance of dying. So that is really scary. I really hope our Sims survive. Um, but anyway, we are going to just quickly have a wedding. I totally forgot to even invite anyone. I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, oh, we don't have Sims of Honor. Let me move on. And I just forgot to invite anyone <laughs> to their wedding. So I'm just going to pull the club over. But Yes, so they're only going to have one child anyway because they both have one baby try. So that's fine. We'll see what happens. He's probably like, I'll have one kid because I have to continue my family line, but I don't want to have a bunch of kids or anything. So that's what I think he's thinking. And we are going to just have them come up here, look at how wonderful they look. They... Honestly, they look related. It's a little weird. <laughs> but um, they are, I think they are like first cousins once removed. Except she's a changeling, so she's not related to him at all. But like the way that she looks, um, the person that she replaced <laughs> is that. So anyway, uh, they're married. Yay. So these two have gotten married. We're going to send them home so that they can get pregnant. And that's when I realized that he does not like kids. So awkward, but okay. So... Um, let's head them home and we are going to just enjoy. Here we go. Okay. So we are going to just have them become pregnant and we'll leave this household after that. So there you go. You're all set. Yeah, he gets like a tense mood lit from hating children. <laughs> well, you shouldn't try for a baby then. Okay, so she's pregnant. I'm not even going to check if it's a boy or a girl. I'm not even going to check. I don't want to know. Like, I mean, I do want to know, but I don't. Because if it's a girl, I'm going to be like, the pain family is over. But if it's a boy, it's like, it could be, but then he might not live, and I don't know. So I'm just, I'm not even going to look. I am not even going to look. So there's that. And we are going to just get a new picture of him because he's a young adult now. Uh, so he gets a new picture for the family tree as well. And then Peregrine also gets a picture on the family tree. And then we'll head over to Dante's house and we will work with him a little bit. Except I start to realize something. This is not 
good. <laughs> so I had more than 80 Sims in my household thing. So obviously I had to remove some. So I tried to remove families that like we weren't doing much with or like that were like townie families and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, and I turned off neighborhood stories. I turned off neighborhood stories in MCCC. I turned off neighborhood stories everywhere. But would you think that neighborhood stories wouldn't happen? No, of course not, because this game is a disaster. So, uh, so yeah, neighborhood stories has been messing up some of my plans, but it also has been helping some of my plans. So it looks like, so I was originally going to marry Orla and Eustace, and then I look and I'm like, wait, why is, why is Orla living with Bob Pancakes? Bob remarried to Orla. Oh my gosh, I turned off neighborhood stories. I even checked that it was off and it was off and yet this game doesn't care. So uh, she married Bob Pancakes when I wasn't looking and then I'm looking around and I'm like, wait a second, some of the other families are different too. So this is just a disaster. <laughs> like, look at that. The Hayes family. Yeah. You want to guess who that guy married? Amelia. You know, the girl who Thomas is trying to marry? Oh, my gosh. Uh, so then, also, Olivia uh, Kim Lewis got married. I'm like, you guys, <laughs> why? <laughs> so what I'm going to say for both Olivia and for Amelia, I'm going to say that, like, their parents tried to arrange marriages for them. And that's why, but like, they're not actually married yet. Like their parents just tried to arrange something for them. And so maybe, you know, our Sim will step in. Like, so maybe Thomas will step in and be like, Amelia, I'll marry you. Like, you don't have to marry that old man. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes in the next part, but I cannot believe this. <laughs> so, but anyway, I was going to have Orla marry Eustace. So I'm like, okay, well, how about we have Dante break up Orla and Bob in this part? Also, I'm checking MCCC. Nope, neighborhood stories is off. Everything is off. So why? <laughs> why? Um, okay, so anyway, I'm just going to suffer, I guess. So um, let's, so first, okay, so my first thing that I was thinking about trying to do was, so for some reason, all of a sudden, Dante doesn't know Eric anymore. There must have been like some relationship culling or something that happened, but I'm like, you do know each other and you were friends, so I'm going to fix that. And so I was hoping that Dante could become good enough friends with Eric that he could convince him to leave Nina, because keep in mind, he's still really mad about everything that's happened between him and Nina. So he is going to try and be really friendly with Eric and then convince him that like Nina is now good as a duchess and blah, blah, blah. And so he's trying to convince Eric to break up with her. And Eric is like, uh, no. And so Eric is really mad about it. And so he goes home and he tells Nina who storms over to our house. Nina just runs over because keep in mind, we're already re really in the red with Nina. And so she comes over and they have a big argument and they fight with each other. And because he has a whim to declare Nina his enemy. So I'm like, OK, so he's going to fight with her. Eric is like, oh, man. <laughs> and then um, Dante lost the fight. <laughs> So he is going to fight with her and then they are going to be declared enemies. So he is now enemies with Nina. He was unsuccessful in breaking up her and Eric. But anyway, we'll invite over Orla because I do want to break up Orla and Bob. So poor Bob, like finally finds someone to remarry. He's feeling good. He's, you know, he's happy. And after everything he's been through and then Dante swoops in again. <laughs> to ruin his marriage so poor Bob um, so Orla is going to um, be flirting with Dante and we'll see um, if we can't have them do their thing so um, Dante is going to flirt with her we're going to get all the way up with her she keeps trying to leave but I'm like nope also she finds him attractive of course she does who doesn't so um yeah so we're just going to work on that. We'll have her leave Bob, which is just awful, so that she can marry Eustace, because I didn't want her to marry Eustace. Don't leave. You can't leave. <laughs> um, I'm just going to take care here of her needs and stuff. Uh, yeah, so anyway, they're doing pretty well. They're feeling good. They are flirting. They are somehow on different levels from each other, so their animations don't quite line up. 
But anyway, so I am just going to have them do their thing. And we'll get them woohooing. We'll see if we can't convince her to leave Bob soon. I mean, she's gorgeous, but like, I'm going to make you leave Bob. <laughs> I do want her to be a part of this story. So um, they're going to woohoo and it's going to be great for them. The kids are just living their worst lives for real. Um, so yeah, we're going to just continue to, you know, romance her until we can get her to leave Bob. And then I was thinking, so I was like, wait a second. Like she did not get pregnant from that woohoo. And that's totally fine. Dante doesn't even like children, even though he's got illegitimate children running all over the place. But then I was thinking, well, you know, maybe we should get her pregnant. Maybe that can be a problem because she's about to, so she leaves Bob. We'll say that she, you know, is eventually, you know, engaged to Eustace. He's a knight. It's a pretty good match for her. So there we go. She's left Bob. And then, um, yeah, so it's a pretty good match for her. So then he's going to get her pregnant. And then she's going to marry Eustace. And he's not going to know that that is not his baby. So Eustace isn't going to know that that's Dante's baby. He'll probably, he might find out if the baby comes out blonde, right? So we'll see where that goes. So I'm just going to change some things there. We're going to get Orla and Eustace married. I rolled for them and see how many babies they have. And the answer is nine. So that's a lot. Um, and then we have, um, I got rid of the guy that married Amelia. I am planning on including that in the story though. And then also I got, so Olivia married, um, one of the new Sims. What was his name again? Let me double check. So, uh, Olivia ended up marrying, uh, one of the reader Sims. What was his name? Kenrick reader. So I was like, okay, well we have to get rid of that. Cause Olivia was going to marry Iggy. So um, I'm going to move Olivia in with Iggy. I'll play them really quick. I'll have her divorce Kenrick. Maybe like her father was thinking about engaging her to Kenrick. And then she was like, but I'm in love with Iggy. And then she goes over to Iggy and is like, Iggy, you have to propose right now. <laughs> like you have to. So, um, see, I have more than 80. And once I have more than 80, it stops letting me do certain things. So I'm like, okay, well, let me see what households I can remove, what households I need to keep. Like, I don't need the alien household. But anyway, so I'm going to have Olivia go over to Iggy and be like, we need to get married right now. And so she's going to um, have him propose to her. And next year, we'll have them get married. So that is how Olivia is going to get out of her marriage with Kenrick. So, or her engagement with Kenrick, even though it was a marriage. But we're going to pretend that didn't happen because this game hates me. And I need it to stop. <laughs> I need it to stop doing these things to me. <laughs> so... Anyway, uh, that's where we're going to wrap up. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this part. I, it's just some wild stuff is happening around here. So um, I'm excited and scared for the war next year. Honestly, there's not like a super good chance that anyone will die. So I'm not so worried about it. But um, I think that it's going to be able to, it's going to enable us to include a lot more drama, you know, with Mortimer going off with the knights and like with, um, Eustace's child being born while he's gone, even though it's like not his kid, he doesn't know that. And then like just so many things that could happen while the war is going on. So I'm excited about that. I hope you are too. And I'll catch you in the next one.